All right, this is Mitch Bola for Eagle Radio, and on the line, we got Mr. Jordy Mackey. Jordy, welcome to the show. Hello, Mitch Bolo. Woo! What a rock fest. Yes, it was. Okay, so Rock Fest 2024 is in the books. We're going to talk all about it. And uh, But first of all, you know, tell us a little bit about who you are. Tell us about the man behind the costume. Tell us about who you are, where you're from, you know, things like that. The man behind the costume, man, when these costumes come out, people don't even know it's me. I remember last year you walked by me as dressed as Blue Beast, and you didn't even know it was me. I walked past you dressed as Beetlejuice this year. I said, hey, there goes Beetlejuice. <laughs> yeah, nice. <laughs> but, yeah, I live here in Marquette, Michigan, work at Gantz's Golf Course. It's awesome. Uh, originally from you in Michigan. I was in the Army for a bit. I did everything here and there for jobs. And, man, it's just a – parade just going along with all this um the costumes and me they coexist if you know me as a person you know that i'm out there if you're a freak like me man <laughs> yeah so you know first of all how many costumes have you created up to this point because it, it's a lot this is my fifth year going to rock fest in a row five so years in a I'll, row five years so i've come up with like 11 costumes since then um, I've repeated two, but it's only the epic ones that get repeated. It's like a public demand almost. Oh, right. It's definitely, um, there's a vendor there that I stop at every year to show my costumes. He's like, Hey man, you got to come by me again. So right away, Wednesday, Thursday, went right up to his booth and I'm like, Hey man, I'm back again. He's like, Oh, you never disappoint. <laughs> That's true. It's true. I mean, you're a rock fest legend at this point. Uh, so Tell us a little bit about how this madness started. What what started with the costume? How did it start the costumes? The costume started because uh, one of the first headliners I was going to see was Rob Zombie. And how do you go to Rob Zombie and not go as a dead guy, <laughs> as a zombie? It is like you have to almost. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you just felt like you were going to Rob Zombie costume and you had to step it up. And you just were going to yep. dress up for that individual occasion? step it up i mean it is and once you're there and you're seeing everything like after the first or second day of the first year i'm like looking at all the people uh, my buddy paul who came with me last year he's like man i really love walking around and seeing all the freaks <laughs> and you're one of them <laughs> <laughs> yeah. man rock fast is a good time so can we do a little bit of a rundown you said this is your fifth year in a row and about 11 costumes can you tell us can you kind of list all 11 that you've uh, done over the years Oh man, all eleven, or as many yeah, as you can remember. Like said, anyway, the first, the first one was uh, the for Rob Zombie going as a zombie, and I actually had on red, white, and blue, so I was an American zombie. Okay. <laughs> then the next year, the next one, I just went as like a plain rock star, black vest, black face with a little bit of white on it. From there, you go to my gold member outfit. So I got a full gold suit with a white sequence jacket or gold sequence jacket and just bling blinging. It makes all the ladies come up. They're like, ooh, shiny bright object. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and is that that's one you wore this year again, right? Yes, that is one I repeated. I just redo my face makeup. Like this year it was more of like a zombie face again. Yeah. So um, for the listeners, I told them I said when I spoke to you for about ten minutes, I think you had eight or nine people come up to you for pictures at that time. <laughs> oh, right. And I always, always take pictures. Anyone who asks, anyone stops me at any time, I will stop. I easily had over 500 pictures taken with me this year. Wow. People stopping, rock stars coming up to me and saying, hey, man, I need your picture. That's great. That's great. So, so that, that's one of the most epic part, too, is when a rock star who you just saw on stage, like, comes up to you and says, hey, man, I need your picture. Yep. You're making their experience, too. That's that's awesome. <laughs> So the um, gold man, and then where, where'd you go from the gold man? The gold man, um, I won the costume contest uh, for VIP tickets two years ago, three years ago, and I was Blue Beast from X-Men. Blue Beast, I remember that. I walked past right. it as the Blue Beast. Full beast nose, prosthetic nose, full makeup, and I was in fur. Like, I had fur wrapped all around me, and one of the worst parts was when I went there and it rained. Oh. I was literally like a wet dog. People <laughs> were like, are you, are you wet there? And I would just shake and get them wet from all the wet on my fur. That's hilarious. And, it, you know, you're dealing with the rain that day, but for other times, people don't know. It gets hot there. That sun oh, beats God. down. It, yeah. This year it was perfect weather, not terribly hot, but the previous years, man, it was 
sweating, sweating. Yeah, I mean, so that's a sacrifice. I, I mean, got the teeth to go with it, the contacts, colored contacts. Wow. Yeah. I mean, it's oh. it's not all fun wearing those costumes all day. That's some work. Well, it definitely takes uh, determination and just to do it. Oh, yeah. Um, one of my favorite costumes is the one I got a picture with you in where I was my cheetah rock star. Oh, okay. That was the one. You were the cheetah rock star with me. Cheetah rock star. Okay. Yeah. And that's a full cat prosthetic nose, contacts, full <laughs> spandex. They, I was rock. I had a tail. Yeah. The teeth were great. The teeth were great. And that was kind that of, one. yeah, you were, there's a little bit of, you got blingy, bling with the uh, cheetah rock star too. That's so cool. All right. That one, the Cheetah Rockstar, that one took me two hours to get ready. Wow. So that, that was, was this your your Cheetah, your Beetlejuice. Oh, yeah. And then Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice is another epic one. Um, they have costume contests every year at Rockfest. This year it was Thursday was the 90s. Saturday was Rocker's Choice. Or, sorry, Friday was Rocker's Choice. And Saturday was Epic Duo. So oh. every year I got to come up with ideas. They, they usually come out with a plan two months beforehand so i got two months to figure out what am i gonna do to make this epic so do you like when Rockfest kind of gives you more direct criteria for what you have to wear or do you like it when they leave it more open-ended and say hey come up with something I, well it's awesome for both it's awesome for me but then it's awesome because you have so many other minds putting in their costumes and coming up with everything that you just never know what you're gonna see yeah, I mean, it's pretty cool. I love I love what, looking at the pictures on the social media when they just do the whole show of all the people dressed up. It's a lot of fun. Oh, God, yeah. I got so many pictures I haven't posted. It's just been such a hectic week. Coming back from Rockfest, you need a week to recover. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So tell us a little bit about your year. Who did you dress? Or we already mentioned, did we mention all the costumes you dressed up as this year? Uh, this year, the Beetlejuice, um, I got to dress up with my friend Destiny as Lady Beetlejuice. And we were rocking so hard that the poor girl, Destiny, she broke her wooer. Her, Everyone's her. like, I broke your wooer? Yeah, my wooer. My woo! <laughs> my wooer. wooer was, I thought I was. I thought I missed something in anatomy or something. <laughs> right? Yep. <laughs> yep. So you, bro- you can break your wooer. <laughs> yeah, that's great. So uh, how was your Rockfest 2024? What did you think of the 30th anniversary? I was actually... Everything, I was looking at the lineup, it's like, man, I don't know about that. But then you get there, and all the songs, like, all, 30 Seconds to Mars was Jared Leto on Thursday night. And me and Lady Beetlejuice are sitting there. We sit second row VIP. So we're right up there in the front. You can feel the pyro when it's coming off. And all of a sudden, Jared Leto is like, all right, last song. I need some people to dance with. Dance up here. And he points to the pit. He goes, you and you. And you, and without even looking at us, he points his finger at us. And Beetlejuice and Beetlejuice, get up here. <laughs> yes. So we got to go on stage with Jared Leto and 30 Seconds to Mars and dance for the last song. And that's just a, an adrenaline feeling that you don't get anywhere else. Yeah, man. I, I was I was watching that moment. I seen you in the Jumbotron. I yelled it so loud. I said, Jordy. It was great. I was, yeah. That made my rock fast seeing that. <laughs> I, uh, I kind of freaked out with John Witherspoon of Seven Dust because... I found him just by himself recording in VIP, and here I am dressed as Beetlejuice. I walk up to him. I'm like, Lejean, Lejean. <laughs> and he's looking at me all weird, dressed as Beetlejuice. Why wouldn't you? I'm like, man, I love seeing your show again. So three years ago, you were at the Island Casino playing, and you talked to a guy, and that guy tried to get you to come to the Trinary Owls races. He's like... Oh, baby, that was you? <laughs> yeah, man, that was me. I was trying to get you to come to all host races. Wait, so were you dressed up at that one, too? Or you just, is uh, that no, just a rock fest? I was not at that one. That one was at the island casino. So you, is but, the costumes a rock fest only thing, or have you done that other places? Um, I've done it a little bit, but honestly, in our area, there's just you got to travel to get to a rock concert. Yeah, that's absolutely true. What What other festivals have you been to other than rock fest? Oh, well, definitely there's the local Hiawatha. Um, I've been down to Pine Knob a few times to see festivals, and that's always awesome. A downstate. Yeah, yeah. You thinking about checking out that new one they have at uh, in Kadat there? It's going to have an EDM festival. Oh, right. I did read that. It would be able to depend if I can get the time off, because when you take a week off for Rockfest, it's hard to get more time off. Oh, yeah. That's for sure. They're going to like, another festival? 
Yeah, right. And I'm not- festival, but I would totally go. So I'm definitely I've been looking at ones in the winter that you can get down south and go to. There you go. We got to get but- you out to Vegas to shoot some pool in one of these Februarys. Oh man, that would be awesome too. <laughs> I am all down for that. Yeah. So, all right, I got another question for you. So, you know, throughout all of your experiences, getting pulled up on stage, pictures, jumbotron at, at these rock festivals, what's your favorite or craziest memory so far? Man, the craziest memory. It all just kind of blurs together. I loved having that moment with Lejean. Um, man, uh, well, all right, I can give you a crazy one that right. is just is stuck in my mind right now. Did you go to the freak show? The yes, I did. I, I, I did. Oh, man. So dressed in there as my cat rock star, they're all looking here and that, and this dude puts a tube up his nose, and they fill a container with 40 ounces worth of beer. <laughs> and then they put Pepto-Bismol in there and hot sauce, and they purge this 40 ounces of beer down this guy's nose into his stomach. Oh, man. And we're all just sitting there watching and watching. And then they pulled it all out and oh. refilled the jug. And it, it wasn't the same color as it came out as it went in. Oh, man. Yeah. So then they're all, all right, we need four volunteers. And my friend Destiny is like, me, me, me. And I'm like, no, no, put your hand down. <laughs> it's like, why? I'm like, they're going to ask you to drink it. Oh, man. I'm like, yeah. Bleh, bleh. Oh, yeah. That's, I can't even imagine the color of it. So then they pour, pull four people up there, and they poured all of them shots. The first two guys, no problem. They slam the shot, take it down. Wooers are going, woo. Then it gets to the third person and this little girl, like 22 years old, and she gave into the peer pressure. And when she took that shot, the mortified look on her face after she <laughs> swallowed it. It was <laughs> Then the fourth guy, the fourth guy was like, nope, not doing it. Nope. Yeah. I was like, do it, do it. He's like, nope. So the first guy walked up, grabbed it, and just shot it down. The first guy grabbed the fourth guy's drink? <laughs> yeah, man, that's legendary. That's an epic move, right? Man, that free that show, yeah. Legendary. Our fourteen-year-old yeah, didn't want to go to that one. He was a little bit off-put by some of that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! But yeah, other than meeting, like meeting Jackal, um, another awesome thing, like Jacoby from Papa Roach. Oh my God, he has so much energy, so much everything. When he took off. Uh, Last year, through the crowd to walk across VIP, well, he ran across the top of the VIP. When he came down, he came down right in front of me, so I got to grab his hand and pull him up on the thing. And he took off running like a champ. And then the security guard took off after him, (laughs) trying to go. He made it seven rows, and he biffed it. Oh, man. (laughs) Running across. (laughs) That is a good story. I'd be watching the show, but then I'd accidentally laugh at the guy after I made sure he was all right. (laughs) All right, right. But, uh, yeah, that guy, that was an awesome show. I just showed my boys that when I said, watch this from last year. When, when he went out in the crowd like that, that's because, you know, the whole thing was about Ronnie Radke, and he was trying to talk about the crowd not moving. Papa Roach, he showed how it's done. Oh, God, yeah. That was and awesome. And then Fever 333, the lead singer going up on the balcony and hanging over the edge. Yeah, that was this year. I actually and missed that one. Up there singing. He's sec- two stories up oh, in man. the recording booth, and he's just hanging. Oh, Fever 333. I, oh my goodness, I have a rock star crush. <laughs> <laughs> yep, the Fever Triple Three player man. from Fever Three Three Three, April K. Oh my goodness, swing bada bada, swing <laughs> bada bada. I would swing for the fence with her. <laughs> yeah, well there you go. Next, well let's see. I wonder if they'll come back to Rock Fest. Hopefully, because I, I I missed that one. I had to go back to the campground for a bit. But that's all I kept hearing about was the show that they put on. Hopefully, they come back some year. Oh yeah. I would hope so too. But yeah, it's man, it's hard to narrow it down. I mean, I love 311. They brought that funky reggae, reggae flow. Yeah. It was just epic all around. Um, I thought Beartooth was amazing. He had yeah. so much energy. Just you can feel it in your soul. And when you're second row, you feel the pyro, you feel the bass. Yeah, I really We're like that tooth. And of course, Shine Down killed it as always. I mean, oh, it's just as always. They've been just, doing it forever. They're one of my top bands. I know every word, every song. 
Yeah, don't even have to wonder if they're going to put on a good show. Just boom, they come in with the, the, the heat every time. So, you know, so let me ask you this one. Let me throw you in the spot with this one a little bit. I want you to be a representative of Rockfest and these other music festivals. Why should people go to Rockfest or other music festivals? Why not just listen to music on YouTube? What makes it different being there live, listening to the band themselves? Being there live, seeing seeing everyone, seeing all the freaks like me. When it's just not the same, you don't, you can feel the energy from a song, but when you got 40,000 people behind you singing that same song, the energy, the, the flow, the, like the power where, man, I could do anything right now. Yeah. That's what going to these rock festivals does to people. And it's so nice having five different stages at rock fest. So you can go, if you don't like this band, you can go check out this next band. You can go up to this band and it's just, it's such a family. Like I have friends, my friend, destiny, love her to death. She's as beautiful inside as she is out. I met her at rock fest and we've just clicked and become amazing friends since then. And granted you could do that everywhere, but it's also, you don't get to see these friends all the time. Yeah. I mean, Once that, a year, you might get to run into these people. Absolutely. And you're mentioning there's the five stages. Uh, there's so much good food. There's a bunch of games in the grounds. And then even once you're out of the Rockfest grounds, there's the camping. I mean, the camping itself is an experience back there because, I mean, people are setting up full bars. They have the different games all over the place. It's nuts. Every, uh, definitely. Um, we had gone to the Bent Nail campground area. There's a saloon down there in Kadat, and they had this huge camping area with games and attractions and other things that are more adult like <laughs> <laughs> but they had tried to do a cherry bomb like record shot and there was easily three or four hundred people in that area just meeting to do this pre it was pre-game before the rock fest show on wednesday night and that you were telling me about that it was it was they were trying to break a guinness world record was that what they were trying to do they were definitely, I don't have an answer if they did or not, because it was total chaos. There were so many people, so what, many people. What record, were they, what, what record were they trying to break? The most cherry bomb shots. Oh, okay, most cherry bombs at once. And you said there's three, 400 people taking them at once? Oh, yeah. They had to do it in groups because oh, wow. there wasn't enough, wasn't enough cups. But, yeah, there were people just walking by. You just held, had a shot glass, people walking by, filling your shot. I think on Wednesday I did like 12 shots within like an hour and a half. Well, hey, that's Rockfest. You can go to Rockfest and make history. <laughs> Definitely. There's you if you're going to do it, you need to be legend. Wait for it. Dairy. <laughs> yeah, there you go. So, uh let's see. We're going to be now we just got to sit and wait. They usually drop the lineups for the next year in in January. Looking forward to doing uh, it again January, next year. January, February. Somewhere January, February, get the lineups and the VIP tickets are already sold out. So we're we'll looking forward to general admission at some point. The camp campsites go on sale later. Uh, Jordy, we'll let you get back to it. Thank you so much for calling in. And let's make this a tradition from now on. Let's uh, talk oh, every I'm year. I'm all for it. All right. I am all for it. Uh, next year, I hope to see uh, I hope to see Lizzie Hale come back. Hale Storm is one of my favorite. Just to hear a freak like me, man. Oh, yeah. I love her. I love her. All right, Jordy. Well, we'll talk to you later, man. All right. Enjoy the day. Miss Bolo, thank you. 106.9, The Rock and Eagle.